Hey everyone, Liam here. So today we are going to be painting the chains on the claws of the brass scorpion. So you can see the design on screen at the moment. They're relatively straightforward, relatively simple, but I'm going to be going over over it. Now, especially for people who want to learn non-metal metallics, I really do recommend painting on a two-dimensional basis. So canvases, freehand, that sort of stuff, because it really helps give you an understanding of how to make things look metallic without using metallic paints. But regardless, I'm going to show you how to do it on the video today. I'm going to break this down into two parts. The first part, I'm going to basically paint a single chain link and I'm going to show you in detail the process of doing it and why I'm doing it. And then I'm going to show you the process for painting an entire chain across the model, namely the large one on the left, just so you can see how it's done. But there's going to be less voiceover on that because you already know the process, but I think it's just good to see how to get it all done. But yeah, so if you like the video, please like and subscribe. The channel's young and I want it to grow naturally, so feel free to share as well. If you want to support the channel, you can support me through Patreon. That's that's would be amazing but mainly patreon is for tuition so if you want tuition get in contact with me uh, check out my patreon or get in contact with me through facebook or instagram and the same as if you want anything commissioned if you want characters commissioned or a nice centerpiece vehicle just get in touch in the links that are in the description so thanks very much i hope the video is helpful so first up on screen we're going to be using the black first of all but the colors we have are Vallejo model color black which I'm using at the moment the one below it's p3 coal black the gray is Vallejo game color I think cold gray and then I just have a white so the recipe is going to be really simple so what we're going to do first of all is with the black I'm painting on the shape of the first chain link. So on this video, I'm gonna do two chain links and it's basically gonna be half a chain link of either. So where they connect. So what I'm doing is I want to sketch on the rough size and the shape of the chain link. So for all intents and purposes, the chain links are U shapes. So one end is a U shape, the other end is a U shape. So that's what you're gonna do. Nice and simple, you can see it on screen. I am trying to be careful because I can't be bothered to be fix it, fixing loads of the red like I did before. So if you do make a mistake, it's really not a big deal. Go back to the second part of the face tutorial. I think it's part four on the Brass Scorpion series where we paint around the eye and that shows you how to fix the red if you do make a mistake. So. It's not a problem if you do, I just don't want to have to have any more work than I need to right now, especially as I'm coming to the end of this. So, start off with a single line in the shape that I want. The reason why I'm doing that is because it gives me a good indication of whether it's symmetrical for a start, and then I can just make those lines larger as I need it. So I can either go further out or further in to get the rough shape. Now, it's better to go too small than too big because once you go too big you're going into the red and you don't really want that but so you can see the u shape there nice and straightforward start so before we move on to the next bit you can see that the the, the chain link isn't symmetrical one side is thicker than the other so i'm just trying to get it so it's the same width all the way around the chain link including the curve so it's nice and symmetrical i mean Depending on the result you get, you, you're after, you may not want it to be symmetrical. It's whatever you want. But I will say, get some reference pictures. So like for, for this, I mean, it's a chain link. I, I can see it in my head. I still should have done a reference picture, to be honest with you, but I didn't. If you're going to do freehand, if you're going to copy something, even if you're painting a model, actually, to be honest with you, get some real life reference pictures. Don't copy other people's paintwork. Don't copy other miniatures copy a real life object so you can see that i'm kind of getting the shape here i'm not happy with that right hand side because it looks a bit off so you can see i'm just making corrections because i'm small because it's smaller than i want it it's not a problem here when i correct it and i go a little bit bigger so it's just a case of getting your outline down and then you can make adjustments 
So as always, remember, because we're doing freehand, in this case, we want a nice controlled brush stroke. So I have a nice point on my, on my brush. My paint is thin enough not to leave a physical mark, but it's thick enough so I don't have to put loads of layers on because I don't want to do that because it will take ages. And then I'm running the paintbrush along my finger. You can use a paper towel or something like that if you want to. I'm running it along my finger and I'm twisting it as I go and that's giving me my nice point. And then when I'm tapping my brush on my thumb, I'm testing the brush mark that I'm getting. So we're on to the second link here. So it's another U shape, basically. It really is that simple. The difference here is here. I'm doing it, if, you're, if you look, the lines, although they're running kind of parallel, the the new link is slightly to the right, so it's further over. So the side of the link on the first one is not in exactly the same position as the side of the link on the second. The reason for that is, is I found that it kind of helped with giving the, the illusion that the chain links are not in the same position, that they're not, sorry, that the chain links are not flat. It, it gave the illusion, it helped later on with the illusion that the chains are, say one is flat and then another one is, uh, is not flat, so they're linking into each other. So I, I did it so they weren't perfectly in the right position. So you can see as well, the curve of this U shape for the link is going over the first one. Now the danger you have here is because we're just using black, it can be quite hard to tell the two links apart, especially in the middle. So what we'll do in a minute is we're going to move on to the gray and we're just going to get some shape in there so we know what's what. But the priority here is you want the proportions right. You want the outline of the link to be for you to be happy with it and you want the proportions of the links to be right. So I'm just going to sketch in the other end of this chain link. I'm not really going to be going over that side of the chain link. What you're going to find is as I go on that side is going to look very unfinished. All I'm bothered about is the first chain link that's going into the trim and the other half of the second link that's linking together because that will let me show you how how I've done it in detail and then it can just be reproduced across the rest of them. So this is the cold grey from Vallejo. The point of this is purely to get the shape of the links as they go together. So. You can see the link that I'm working on at the moment. This is the link on the right hand side. This curve here is going under the other link. So all I'm doing is I'm just painting it all gray. And the reason why I'm going to such a bright gray straight away is I want to use the P3 coal black. But if I put the P3 coal black over the Vallejo model color black that I've painted on the model, it's going to be black it's going to be so dark you're barely going to see it whereas if i put the cold gray down and then put the p3 cold black cold black coal black what will happen is you'll get this nice dark blue and that's what i want to work with at first so you can already see there's the shape of the first link and now i'm working with the other one and it's important to note as well where these two links are going into each other, you can clearly see it. There is a black line between them. I want to keep that dark. The point of keeping it dark is I can clearly see where one link ends and one another one begins. Especially as you, this is especially as important as you go ahead and do the rest of the links. And if you do a whole chain all in one go, it's quite easy to get lost, as I found out later, for where the links go together and you can lose the pattern and I have done on a few of them later but it doesn't make a big difference so it's important to judge where your lights coming from as well so this claw is the scorpions left claw but if you're looking at the scorpion from the front it's the right one so our light on all the freehand that I've done comes from the top right 
So what that means is all of our brightest points are going to be on the right top and all the darkest points are going to be coming from the bottom left. So you can see I've started, I've gone back to the Vallejo black, model color black, and the bottom half of the chains I'm basically black lining. I'm just making them black. So the idea here is those are the darkest part of the chains and I want them black for a reason as well because later on what we're going to do is we're going to add like a little bounce highlight like a little reflection so the blacker it is the more that highlight is going to stand out without needing to go too light so you can see on screen exactly what's going on at the moment it's nice and easy I've just separated the chains in half basically we have two separate links and the links are half grey half black nice and easy So next we're going to jump to the P3 coal black, thin this down a little bit, but I still don't want a really thin paint because I don't want it running everywhere. So I want this thin enough. So I've, I've thinned it down to two parts water, one part coal black, but it's always the same. It's what works for you. In this case, I want it thin enough so it's going to darken the gray and turn it to a bit of a blue, but I want it to tint the black, but not make the black disappear. That's the general idea. Now, as I always say, we are sketching. Get everything down rough, and then you can refine it later. Because if and when, more importantly, you make a mistake, you're not gonna waste loads of work. If you spent loads of time refining, blending, making it all perfect, and then you screw up, all of that work is wasted because you're gonna have to paint over it, so you don't want it. So you, it's, it's better just to for me it's better just to sketch it so here we're now mixing a bit of the gray black and coal black and what i'm doing is i'm mixing these colors together to get a dark blue gray and then the idea for this is what i want to do where i put the cold gray highlights earlier I'm going over it now what you're gonna see is this is too dark I should have gone brighter at first I didn't so this doesn't make a huge difference to what I've already done to the cold black but the idea of this is I'm gonna I'm, I'm marking in the shapes in the brightest points so this is on the top half of the chains effectively and also the link which is closest to the trim, that outer curve at the top, that's going to be somewhat brighter because that's where my light source is going to hit it the most. But that chain link on the right as well, the part of the link that goes under the first link, and you'll see what I mean as I go on because it's hard to explain, that's also going to be brighter. So both of those points are going to be highlights. So that previous mix that was too dark, you can see on screen now that I'm mixing a brighter version. There's more cold gray in there and there's more cold black. You can see that it is much brighter, so it's gonna have more impact. So it's really not a problem if you make mistakes in between. It's only paint, it can be fixed. Just experiment and enjoy it. Now, you can see where I'm bringing this brightest point out on the chain. It's important to remember that although, say, the top half of the chain is the brightest, because the chain link in itself is circular, it's curved all the way around. We're not doing a square chain. Because the whole thing is curved, the highlight is going to get smaller at the peak of the curve. So even, let's say, the bottom of the the bottom half of the chain is darker where we had the black previously even the top half the other side of the chain is still going to be darker but it's not going to be as dark because we need to think of it as a cylinder for all intents and purposes so if you're unsure what i mean look at a cylinder a cylinder will have the top of the curve will be the brightest and then it will get darker on both sides so you can just see that I'm playing with my light and dark and already we have 
a decent shape to the links on an individual basis. So we're going to work, we're going to jump over to that cold black. Uh, sorry, we're going to jump over to the cold gray. Now we're going pure gray for the time being. And what we're going to do is work out our very brightest points on this chain. That's the last time you're going to see the wet palette because the consistency of the paint doesn't really change now we're, we're constantly working with the same consistency because we don't want the paint going too thin if the paint goes too thin it's going to run it's not going to give us hard marks and we're not going to get the result so this is what i was talking about the brightest points of the chains you can see that curve that curve is our brightest peak of where the light is going to hit you can also see this chain now you'll see there we go the inner curve so those two curves make sense because they match because they're both gonna gain light you can also they're also they're gonna reflect light sorry you can also see that the chains the 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 chain links themselves now that gray highlight is very narrow and that gives the indication that it's curved and you'll also see the top one looks rubbish because it looks really flat because there's no shadow on either side. So this is where we're going to try and sell the result now. So I'm going to the cold black, cold black, the cold gray. And what we need to do is metals reflect light in from lots of different sources very easily. So we need to add some secondary highlights. So the, in the dark areas where we specifically left black, I'm going to add some very small and very thin lines. And I'm also going to have a variation in thicknesses and lengths, just so it's it's a bit more random. So you can clearly see on the inside of that curve, it's a very small highlight. This is just to show that there's other light bouncing from other places. It's the same as on the rest of the chains. So you can see here, I'm just, I'm putting in some black. The reason why I'm painting black in is because I don't actually have space to put any secondary highlights. And if I put a secondary highlight in and I don't like the shape or it's too big, because we're just working with the black, we can, we can just use it as a rubber and rub it out. We can just go over it, makes it nice and easy. So I'm picking the points where I think there would be a bounce highlight, uh, another highlight that might look interesting. There's no real rule here. This is where you can be experimental, expressive, whatever you want to say. And you can make your little adjustments and add highlights where you think they'll look cool. So my general rule for this, what I did was wherever I have black I'm putting in very small hard lines in those black areas that way that black isn't very boring and it will just show a nice reflection it gives it some interest Now you'll see me jumping between the black and the grey quite a lot. The reason for this is because I am experimenting. I have no... Because this is the first one that I did. I don't have at this point any real idea of what works great as a hard and fast rule. As I go further on and do more chains, it just comes to me quite quickly. I've already worked out what I like. But you'll see me making the adjustments. And that's why I did this part of the video. Because I thought it's important that you see that... I'm experimenting with it as I go. It's exactly the same as the eye. There's no plan in here. I'm just winging it. Don't do that. If you plan it, you'll get a better result. That's always the better option, but I haven't done it with this whole series purely because it's better to, to show it off. So again, I'm just going with the black, making those shadows as dark as possible. And the reason for that is because then when I do the gray, although the gray is not really really bright it makes quite a strong mark and shows up now it's also worth noting because this gray is as in the secondary highlights is as bright as the rest of the gray we're going to need to make our main highlights go brighter as well to really sell the result and that's what we're going to do next so the paint that i have on my brush now 
Remember the white that we have on the wet palette. I'm not going to white. White is the last resort because once you go to white, you can't go any brighter. I've added some white into the cold gray. That obviously makes it much, much brighter. Now, what I need to do here is my highlight points, my brightest point on my main highlight, I'm painting a very, very thin line. So make sure you get the point, you twist your brush onto your finger or your paper, test the brush mark first, and then I'm just painting a really thin line. And this is where it really starts to work because all of a sudden you have those secondary highlights which aren't very bright, and then you have a really bright highlight on your brightest points and you start to get that metallic result. And as you can see, this is where it really starts to sell. That first chain link especially, the one closest to the trim, looks really good. The other one's not as good purely because it's only half painted, it's not finished. But obviously, trying to explain the process, I didn't want to do an entire chain length because we'd be here all day. So, I know everyone likes smooth, thin coats. I know you, I know people like really soft transitions. With freehand, the smaller it is, it's, it's not always a good idea to have really soft marks. It's not always a good idea to have really soft transitions. Your brush can sorry, your brush stroke and your more importantly, your paint consistency is entirely dependent on the result that you want. It's not always right to thin your paints a ridiculous amount. Sometimes it's not even right to thin your paints. Sometimes it's better to use thick paint. So that little dot on the top of that curve and the one on the inside of this curve, this is pure white. And funnily enough, that paint is not thinned. So all I've done is put that paint on my brush. I've rubbed off the excess so I'm not going to drop loads of model paint on that model. And then I'm just put in what is effectively a very small dot at the top of those, at the brightest, the very brightest points of the chain. And th this is what, between the reflection, the secondary reflections that we did with that cold gray, and between the white dots on the highlights, that will really sell the metallic result. And then that's it. That's pretty much the process for it. And I did a little bit of cleaning up afterwards, but that's how you paint a metallic chain. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to show you the process that I did on an entire chain length, but I'm not really going to do any voiceover on it. I'm just going to speed it up so you can see me painting the entire chain all in one go. So if you want to skip that part of the video, then by all means do, but it might be helpful to you. So that's the right hand claw done. You can see with the chain links in place, it looks fairly good, it looks believable. If I'm honest, what I'll probably do when the Scorpion's all done is I'll go a little bit brighter on the highlights, I'll push it to a white on quite a few of the chain links, which I haven't really done yet, but anyway. So we're gonna speed through all this and you'll get to see an entire chain length done in slow motion. Uh, speeded up sorry doing well and yeah hopefully it's helpful
So that's it. That's the whole process for painting the chains on the scorpion's claws. Naturally, this can be done on any model. It can be done at any scale. The fact that I have lots of different sized shapes, different sized chains, sorry, on these claws show that it can be done. The larger the chain, the softer the transition you can get. So the softer the marks, the smaller the chain, the less of a transition that you're going to have and the harder the marks that you're going to have. But regardless, I hope the video was helpful. I'm really enjoying making these so far. So let me know what you think. Give me some feedback. If there's anything that you think that I should change on the videos, it would be greatly appreciated. So thanks again.